educate us about today's event. Thank you, Ed. Um, today's event is called Golden Years, weighing Philippine martial law 1972 to 1981. It's an exhibit of vintage original press photos that were collected from the archives of US, US papers. And the exhibit specifically focused on the period of Marcos years, the first um, when he was first elected as a president in 1965 up to 1986 when he was ousted by a peaceful people's revolution. Amazing. Um, can you tell us um, what made you uh, start this event? Uh, uh, what inspired you? Well, this year, 2022, is the 50th anniversary of martial law, which President Marcos declared in 1972. And since then, there has already been a lot of contention about what actually happened during those years. Uh, some of the facts that were uncovered uh, after their ouster are started to be questioned. And so what I want to show are these photographs, which are visual documentation of the events as they happened during the time that they happened and uh, without any digital alteration and to show to the people um, what, what really transpired during those times. How long did it take you to uh, gather all this information? These uh, photographs were collected privately over the last 15 years um, here in the U.S. Eventually, they will be donated as part of a larger endowment to an arts foundation in the Philippines. But before that, um, I think that it's great to have this conversation, these objects being collated here in the U.S. had another layer of meaning of how important it is for journalists or for people um, outside or distant from the Philippines to be able to provide perspective, I guess, um, a different objectivity because of the distance, both with, with, with space and time, and create their own um, opinion based on the narrative that is not colored by any political um, event in the Philippines. Great. And what, um, when, when you were younger and going, were, were you there in, in, in the uh, event? Sure. Uh, as I said in the opening program uh, today, I was two years old when martial law was declared. And I grew up in a very small town in an island in the Philippines that could be as, as far removed geographically and politically from the, from the capital of the Philippines. Growing up um, in grade school, we were taught about how the Marcoses were the parents of the country. Um, Ferdinand Marcos, the father, Imelda Marcos, the mother, and how they would like to take care of everybody. We would line up in the morning um, for the flag ceremony, um, singing the national anthem. And after that, we would go to the classrooms and we would pledge our allegiance to the country and to the first couple, uh, Mark Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos, and sing um, their own song, um, Bagong Silang, uh, Bagong Lipunan, uh, New Society, basically. And that was what was inculcated in our head. And the reality of what happened, um, the human rights abuses, the economy, is something that I did not learn until after college, until after their ouster. And the reason for that, again, um, is that they had suppressed media, they controlled the information, and all the tyranny, all the atrocity of the regime, and what they did to the country economically only came out after they were gone. And I learned all of that in college. And I was part of the uh, a human rights association, a human rights group called Task Force Detainees of the Philippines. My job there as a volunteer in college was to go through documentations, um, go through recordings of the atrocities that happened during the Marcos regime and transcribe them and look at photographs of victims of human rights, um, the maiming, the blooded faces, uh, the killings. Um, all of those were their tangible evidences 
um, I cannot bring them here. But what I have found out instead are these recordings here in the U.S. Um, of what transpired in the Philippines back then. So I think it's very important that this being collected here um, will be shown here first. So that, again, the, to, to underscore the importance of witnesses from a distance. Great. Um, what, what are you expecting from the community uh, that you feel, uh, at your opinion, that you're going to get uh, after this event or, or educating or giving the information out there? What I expect is just conversation. Mm -hmm. um, to open it up conversation that is based on fact and not opinion, mm -hmm. um, the, based on evidence, not gossip, based on reality, not perception with these as tools. It's difficult nowadays though, because there is all, there's a lot of demonizing of the media. There's a lot of demonizing of the role of the press. Uh, there's a lot of demonizing on the role of journalists. So I'm sure that for someone who is already um, had a lot of faith on the Marcoses, that will not change their perception. They will not change their opinion. But what um, I want to be able to focus on are those who are still sitting on the fence, sitting on that cannot form one, one way or the other. And hopefully that can uh, convince them to go to the side of truth, to go to the side of the facts and reality. Got it, understandable. Um, it's, there's a film that's going to be coming out, is that correct? Well, we have a component. Okay. They will have two programs related to this. On September 10, we're going to curate a series of um, short films. Okay. That The list is being finalized still, but um, we will have uh, those short films are related to the Marcos years, especially um, to the martial law. And before the end of the show on September 25, uh, we will have another talk um, uh, around that area and we'll be we will be inviting experts okay is it going to be the same location from this uh, is going to be here and okay. FIU FIU has been kind enough to lend us their facilities mm -hmm. um, for the both the film showing and the uh, conversation how, how do you feel so far or, or the the feedback that you got from the community that's been here I, it's very overwhelming, actually, in a positive way, because mm -hmm. when I started it, it's just a personal vision mm -hmm. um, of having this photograph shown in public. I just thought of a small venue and just myself, but it grew bigger and bigger because more and more people extended their support. More and more people wanted to participate and to be able to get a venue like this at um, Florida International University without any connection is almost like a miracle. So I was so happy that somebody named William Cordova, who's really a famous artist down here in Miami and, and the U.S., um, and a Peruvian of that, who has very little connection with Filipino, persevered to get this shown because he also um, saw a lot of parallelism between what happened in the Philippines and what happened in Peru and other Latin American countries during the tumultuous dictatorships in, in, in Latin America in the 70s and the 80s. Now, you're um, just rewinding a little bit. You, know, you mentioned that um, this, this information is for the people on the fence, but are you, you feel that you're going to get a lot of pushback from the other side? And how would you be able to approach that? I don't know yet. What I know is that people on the other side, I mean, the pro Marcos, don't want to attend and don't even want to have this conversation. They are already rejecting um, this show as another propaganda from the opposition or the pink or wh whoever it is that they feel are, are attacking the Marcoses. The fact is, these are just facts. These are evidence. These are self contain evidence by themselves, pictures, narrations taken during the time that they happened. And in those instances, you really cannot have a conversation. For a productive conversation to happen, you must agree on the premise. And at that point, and I think that we're not agreeing on the very premise. So I don't think that it's easy to reach out to them. Great. Um, what, what, where if, if the, uh Asiana Post community want to reach out to you, where can they um, reach out to you if they have any questions, things like that? 
Sure. Um, they can reach out to me through the through Facebook. We have uh, we have published this as an event. My information is there. And any question that they have, they can just message um, uh, privately or publicly, and I can provide the answer. Great. Uh, last question. I thought that was going to be my last question. How does it feel so far that you are um, spreading the the uh, the information that you're doing to the community? What is it uh, deeply inside of you? What do you feel about it? It's really heartwarming. Like I said, I I am overwhelmed. Um, by the generosity of people. I'm also overwhelmed by the curiosity and the willingness of, of, of people to have this information go around, not only here in Miami, but around the U.S. The fact is, after the show here, this will go to New York and New Jersey. People um, in those cities and other cities have been reaching out to have the show travel to them. So, so far, we don't have definite dates yet. We only have months. After New Jersey and New York, this will travel to California uh, for the whole month of November and December. And then we have Houston, and then we're targeting Seattle and Chicago as well. Great. And well, the rest of the year, we're still open to for other sponsorships. Great. Well, we look forward to uh, covering your event again, uh, hoping to see you again. And it's very uh, uh, amazing what you have here. Uh, we want to thank you so much in the community, what you're doing. All right. Thank you so much, too, Ed. Thanks.